What's up everyone, in this video we will be going over Unit 3 of Calc AB. It involves the chain rule, implicit differentiation, composite functions, and inverse derivatives. This expands on the previous lesson on derivatives, so make sure to check out my Unit 2 video if you haven't, and subscribe to know when I post more. The chain rule is for differentiating functions within each other, such as f of g of x. The answer can be found by using the formula f prime of g of x times g prime of x. This basically means that we take the derivative of the outer function, then multiply by the derivative of the inner function. In this example, the outer function is the power of 2, so we derive this first to get 2 times 3x minus 2. The inner is 3x minus 2, so we multiply by its derivative, which is 3, to get our answer. This also applies for powers of trig and log functions. For cosine cubed of 4x, we have three layers of chain rule. The outermost is a cubed function, then the cosine, then 4x. We start from the outside to get 3 times cosine 4x to the power of 2, then multiply by negative sine 4x, then finally multiply by 4. We could also be given chain rule from a table, and we would follow a similar process but plug in numbers as we solve. We get h prime of 2 from the table as 6, then get h of 2, which is negative 1. We take f prime of negative 1 to get negative 5, and we get our answer as negative 30. Next is implicit differentiation, which is when a function isn't as simple as y equals something x. For example, we could have x squared plus y squared equals 50. We start differentiating like normal and get 2x plus 2y equals 0. However, since this is implicit, we multiply by dy over dx whenever we derive y. This can also be donated by y prime. We move all of the other terms to the other side and we get dy over dx equals negative x over y. Let's take a look at a more difficult example. x cubed y squared plus 4y equals 3. The first step is the product rule, and we get 3x squared times y squared plus 2y times dy over dx times x cubed. Next is 4dy over dx, and when they add together, they equal 0. The simplest way to solve this is by moving all terms without dy over dx to the right. Next, we factor out dy over dx and divide both sides to solve for dy over dx easily. Inverse derivatives are the next topic and it involves inverse functions. A quick review on finding the inverse of a function is replacing the x and the y. The inverse of y equals x squared is x equals y squared, which leads to y equals square root of x. Let's call them f of x and g of x and the relationship is that their points can be reversed. f of 4 is 16, and g of 16 is 4. f prime of 4 is 2 times 4, so 8. g prime of 16 is 1 over 2 square root of 16, so 1 over 8. This gives us the formula that the derivative of the inverse at point A is 1 over the derivative of the original function at point B, given a point a, b, such as 4, 16 in the example above. A common way to present this topic is from a table. To find the derivative of g inverse at 2, we look at the table and find g of x has the point 1, 2. Our answer is 1 over g prime of 1, so 1 over 5. The inverse of trig functions also have special forms which are shown here. They are pretty simple, and here's a quick example using arctan of 3x. Make sure to use the chain rule when needed, such as multiplying by 3 for this problem. Lastly, we have higher order derivatives. These can be notated as d squared y over dx squared or as y double prime. It basically means taking the derivative of a derivative. For example, with 3x to the power of 4, we get 12x cubed, then 36x squared. However, it is a bit more complicated when we deal with implicit differentiation. Using the example of x squared plus y squared equals 50, we do a first order to get dy over dx equals negative x over y. 
derive it again, we use the quotient rule to get negative y minus negative x times dy over dx all over y squared. We plug in dy over dx from the first derivative to get negative y minus x squared over y all over y squared. So a second derivative is just the same process but you plug in the first derivative after. Depending on the question, you may have to further simplify it or plug in numbers to solve. Unit 3 ends there. These topics of more advanced differentiation are extremely common on the AP exam and you should be able to do them comfortably after some practice. If you're unable to figure it out, leave a comment and I'll make sure to clarify. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe so you know when I do a Unit 4 review.